I want you to go to your Bibles as quickly as you can, whether it's in your Bible or your smart device. Exodus chapter 28, verse 31 through verse 35. Y'all gonna help me preach tonight? Glory be to God. I do feel a boom in the room tonight. Somebody needs something from God tonight. Exodus chapter 28, verse 31 through verse 35. When you have it, I want you to say, I have the bread. I have the bread. And thou shalt make the robe of the ephod all of blue. And there shall be a hole in the top of it and in the midst thereof. It shall have a binding of woven work round about the whole of it, as it were with the whole of the habergeon, that it be not rent, have beneath upon the hem of it thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet thank you so much round about them thereof and bales of gold between them round about a golden bale and a pomegranate a golden bale and a pomegranate upon the hem of the robe round about and it shall be upon Aaron to minister. And his son shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before the Lord. And when he cometh out, that he die not. I'm going to read verse 35 again. And it shall be upon Aaron to minister for him to serve. And his sound shall be heard and all of God's people said amen. amen before you sit down I want you to scream this at your neighbor you can sit down tell them don't lose the sound you'll be seated in the presence of the Lord don't don't call I come to celebrate your anniversary but I want to tell you don't lose the sound there's a sound to holiness. There's a sound to Pentecost. Scream at somebody on your own. Tell them, don't lose it. Don't lose it. Don't lose the sound. Don't, don't lose the sound. I started a dialogue this morning with the Ramp Church International this morning uh, talking about worship. Um, in our present day church culture, we have made worship a genre and we made worship a style. I'm going to be honest with you. Recently, I've had to engage in the gospel music industry. Something that I never desired and something I never anticipated. There's some people you rather know at a distance. My challenge with, with the gospel music industry is that I was disappointed when I found out that gospel music industry and gospel ministry is not always synonymous. There are some people who do this but they no longer believe in this. Glory be to God. As we celebrate uh, the, these individuals this week and doing church anniversary, their faithfulness and commitment, we understand that they should be celebrated because we're living in an hour now that people can't serve in church without giving the church an invoice. It used to be a time where people volunteered, but people don't volunteer anymore. Wow. Gospel music industry and gospel ministry is not always the same thing because it's possible to operate within the nuances of church culture. You can be a preacher that preaches from a Bible that no longer convicts you. Mm. 
it's got to be more for you than a check come on somebody I need you to look at somebody if you mean it tell them I still believe in this no no when I say I believe in this because I know our new intellectual and academic generation that brought everything into question but I believe in it and I need all of it I need the anointed oil I need the carry service I need to run around the church I need to fall out in the floor I need Bible study I still need Sunday school tell somebody I need all of this because before you get so bougie to act like you don't need it it was church that raised you I know, I know you went to college and a university, but there's some skills that you got from church that people you went to school with never had. I need you to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, the church raised me. It was the church, it was church mothers that corrected me. Come on. It was my pastor that when my mother's voice wasn't strong enough, Bishop could say something. You call it cult when it was really culture. That's, that God used to save our lives. Yeah, yeah. So what is, what is worship? What is worship? Because some of you in our shift of transition in church culture, many among Pentecost have now folded their arms and crossed their legs and they say, I'm not a praiser, I'm a worshiper. I don't need, see y'all too churchy, y'all like to dance. I don't do all that dancing, I'm a worshiper. But I wanna lift to you that praise is not a fast song and worship a slow song. Our ancestors were worshiping before Hillsong ever cut a project. Y'all not said that. I thank God for Bethel. Come on. I thank God for all of these other groups. But I need you to tell your neighbor, my grandparents were worshiping. How do I know they were worshiping? Because worship is not a style. Worship is a posture. I said, it's a posture. Because if you sing the words, but your heart is not postured with the lyrics, you are not worshiping and that's why at some point worship leaders stop keep telling everybody what to say when it's time for worship because just because you repeat what I said don't mean your heart was attached to it at some point my job as a worship leader is not to make you worship you can't force somebody to worship you you I, you tell me to clap my hands but if I'm not clapping in my spirit there's no praise going to God my worship is because it costs me something Uh, Abraham says uh, y'all praying for me I feel my strength coming Abraham says to his servants stay here because we got a worship set now that's not what they that's not what he said he says stay here because we're going me and my son are going up there to worship it already tells me that in order to truly worship God, an ascension must take place. You can't run straight off the street and take me somewhere you ain't been all week. Come on. You got to ascend. We keep, we keep talking about God sending it down, sending it down. But let me tell you, in this hour, he's not sending something down. It's time for you to come up to it. Hey, it's time for you to, I need somebody to come and talk to me here. It got, Zion is calling for us to ascend. I need you to look at the people on your tell them, ascend, ascend. It's time for us to go higher. Hallelujah. God is requiring another place out of us. We keep shouting, I'm going to another level, but another level is coming up out of you. But you got to ascend. There are some things you will never see and experience in God until you ascend let me just give you a reference for that and i move really quickly peter james and john come here we're going to the mount they go up on the mount what we call the mount of transfiguration why they're there the bible says uh why peter james and john is there on the mountain elijah and moses shows up and they said oh my goodness moses and elijah 
oh my goodness Moses and Elijah the question is how did they know it was oh, how did they know it was Moses and Elijah Peter James and John hallelujah they are born at a time where Moses has been dead for generations and Elijah had been taken up in a chariot so how did they know there was no Facebook come on there was no internet how there were no pictures of Moses and Elijah how did they know it was Moses and Elijah because there are certain revelations that are released to you once you ascend some things don't have to be explained when you are sin. See, some people see us turning around in the spirit and quickening it. And look, what is that about? You can't, uh, this can't be explained. It's got to be revealed. And it's only revealed at higher altitudes. Stop coming down trying to explain spiritual things to carnal people. Stop bringing carnal people to board meetings making spiritual decisions. Stop looking at your carnal friends for a spiritual reference. Hallelujah. Abraham says, y'all be seated please. Stay here. My son and I are going to worship. All of us in here that knows the instructions of Abraham, we know this means Abraham is going to lay down his son and he calls laying down his son worship and most of the time when we talk about laying something down before God we talk about sin <laughs> something that's toxic something that's corrupt something that's dysfunction oh I had to give it to God but real worship is not when you lay down something that's bad what happens when God inconveniences you to lay down something that he gave you? He gave you the child and then you had to give the child back to God. Y'all not, hallelujah. He, he gave you the job. Now he's requiring you to lay down the job for a purpose that's greater. You haven't worshipped God until you've been confused by God. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I said something totally off. At least 20 of you all know what I'm talking about. The rest of you just eavesdrop. Have you ever prayed for something and the thing that came to you was not what you prayed for? You haven't worshipped God until you've worshipped Him in the midst of your questions. I need you to tell your neighbor, I don't understand God, but I worship Him. Okay, I'm going to give you all a moment. I need everybody in this room to praise God for the last thing He took. Uh, look, some of y'all can't pray. No, I need a sober. I'm talking about, I need a worship and a sound out of the people who've had to stand beside caskets. I need the sound out of people who lost a job. I need a sound out of somebody that after being faithful, it didn't work out the way you anticipated. And Abraham calls it worship. See, we romanticize. Y'all be seated really quickly. And next time we get up, we'll go and close the service. You, we romanticize the book of Job. But what you have to realize is that Job did not have the book of Job to read. <laughs> to the point, there's a conversation that God is having with Satan concerning Job's life. Now that's very problematic for me because the Bible says that when the sons of God, which are, which are angels, went before God, Satan also went with them. I have a challenge with that because I'm always rebuking the devil. I'm always casting him out and God has given him a space. Now, my issue is, I know y'all just read across the Bible and don't pay no attention, but my issue is, why is the God I serve and the devil that's trying to kill me having conversations? He's not rebuking Satan, he's just asking Satan, where have you been? And in the presence of God, even a liar got to tell the truth. 
all you got to do is get up in the Holy Ghost. God will reveal every serpent spirit in your church. He'll reveal every lion demon. All you got to do is cut the fire on. He says, where you been? Uh, going everywhere I can and seeing who I can destroy. And it wasn't Satan. It was God that brought up Job. I mean, have you considered Job? Put your finger on somebody's shoulder and tell them, God must be bragging on you. I'm talking about when all hell breaks loose in your life all in one week and you say what in the world is going on I could handle it if it was one thing but before I can recover from one thing something else happening to you push somebody tell them God is bragging on you and listen what Job says once everything is taken from him he says first of all when he finds out that all of his children die in one day this is a multiple casket funeral he shaves his head he rips his garment in other words he grieves that's his humanity and I think um, the church along with our worship we need to have some group sessions no really no last last week instead of Bible study we had a group grief counseling session at our church because what we realize we do praise well and we rejoice with those who rejoice well but we don't do good mourning with those who mourn we need you to get over it as quickly as you can go back to serving so we'll feel better y'all not sending to me and just because you got past it don't mean you got over it and some of the stuff we're dealing with in church is unprocessed grief. I said some of the toxic things we're dealing with in church is because we haven't taken time to process our loss. Yes, they left the church and we glad they left. But you're not being honest about the fact is that you opened up your heart to people who trampled it again. The betrayal did not feel good. And now you're making new people pay for what old people did. And now when new people join the church, you clap your hands and say, welcome them to the church. But the real question in your mind is two questions. Who sent you and how long will you stay? Because we haven't processed grief well. Job shaves his head and he rips his garment. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you have permission to be human. Anytime we talk about the anatomy of Yeshua, the anatomy of Jesus, we put strong emphasis, especially us of, the, uh, of this apostolia, or this oneness movement, we put strong emphasis on the deity of Jesus, that he's fully God. But oftentimes, we don't acknowledge enough the fact that he's also fully man that we don't serve a high priest that have come on y'all talk to me that haven't been touched by the feelings of our infirmity maybe we're not shouting over the right stuff maybe every once in a while we need to praise God because after all the stuff I was going through he didn't always rescue me out of it but he sat with me in it to y'all that you felt your mind slipping and you were slipping back into depression and you were still serving but while you were having your mini nervous breakdown in the front seat of your car he sat with me in it he didn't judge me by it he didn't say you should trust me he says I sit with you until you catch your breath I sit with you until you believe me again He sat with me in some stuff. I, while my mind was going back and forth over what I believe, after I prayed and after I served, and he still let my family member die, I sat in my grief. And he gave me space to be human. But what did he do? What did Job do after he shaved his head? What did Job do after he ripped his garment? 
after he expressed his humanity, Mother Martha, he said, the Lord giveth. See, that's when worship come in. See, all this fake stuff and you acting like don't nothing bother you, that ain't real worship. Real worship is I don't get you right now. The Lord giveth. The Lord taking away, but I'm still going to bless you. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm still going to bless you. My foot almost slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, but I'm still going to bless you. Though you, I need a church here. Though you what? Though you slay me. Though you're killing me, God, yet will I trust you. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I've had to trust a silent God. Everybody, everybody can rejoice as long as he's talking. But if you ever walk with God more than 16 months, I know what it is for God to lure you in with the promise and drop you off into a process. I know what it is for him to pull you in to an assignment and it seems like he goes ghost on you. And I come to tell somebody in this room, if you ain't heard God say nothing lately, I need you to run over to somebody and tell him, hold on to the last thing he said. I need you to get out of your seat, tell somebody, hold on to the last thing he said. Because if he hasn't said nothing different, that means he hasn't changed his mind. I need a hundred people to open up your mouth because you're holding on to what he said. Hold up. I'm hooked up. So, so it's not worship. Y'all be seated, please. I'm looking at my time. Kevin, it's not worship until it costs you something. until it's sober mm. until you've been disappointed by him because mm. one thing about God he loves you he cares for us but God is more consumed with his glory than he is your comfort oh I know that ain't, that ain't a good preacher right there but he'll let you go through an ugly season Huh, and then turn around and give you beauty for ashes. He'll give you strength for fear. He'll give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And I want to stop right here and I need to get back to my text. But I come to tell somebody that have gone through a heavy season. God told me to tell you, you're on the other side of it. You may not even know it. You may not even feel it. But God told me to tell you, you're on the other side side of it hallelujah hallelujah i come to tell somebody by the time you wake up in the morning the heaviness will not be there i come to speak to somebody who's been dealing with anxiety and fear and your heart has been beating faster than you wanted to god told me to tell you by the time you get up in the morning i'm going to regulate your heartbeat i need somebody in this room that over the last 90 days you've had to deal with some stuff privately without communicating with a whole lot of people i want you to take 30 seconds and get your therapy open up your mouth and shout right there. So will you come here? Will you come here, please? Because this is what I see the Lord is about to do for 72 people in this room that will praise him tonight. God says, whatever's been on your back, he's about to put it under your feet. Just step up. I didn't know she was going to dance.
seated, be seated. I got the move, but I want everybody to take 30 seconds and put it under your feet. Do it now, do it, do it. Now, I'm asking you to say something real bold. I want you to turn to somebody because you need an echo. I want you to put your finger on them. Just put one prophetic finger on them. Tell them there will be no premature death in your house. You're not about to have a heart attack. You're not about to have a stroke. There will be no premature death. No premature death. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, I need you to lay hands on somebody and rebuke death. Tell them there will be no premature. Not yet, not yet, not yet. You're too important to the story to die in this chapter. Live, 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 live. Whoa! I command you to live. Y'all be seated. Go back, please. There will be. There will be. He found the hope. No premature death in your house. So I'm telling I just needed to, to serve notice on the shadow that's been following you. Somebody been, somebody been feeling a shadow. Somebody been feeling a shadow. Somebody in this room, you've experienced death in your family. But I need you to tell somebody you don't have to die where they die. God said more, 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 more. How? Y'all be seated as quickly as you can. It's so good. Be seated as quickly as you can. Y'all feel that? Somebody just changed their mind. Somebody almost came in agreement with death and they just changed their mind. I believe I live. So God, God was so intentional about worship. And I'm, I'm thankful for the hour that we're living in and the benefits of this hour. The benefits of technology, instruments that accompany us in worship. When I was growing up, we used to say, we don't need no music, but we wait for the music to come back in, right? I mean, yeah, musicians come with I, laptops and stuff. I don't even know what's going on. We have liturgical dancers. I, didn't, I don't know if y'all, we didn't have that growing up. I mean, liturgical dancers? 
The only flags you were going to see were the mother swinging a handkerchief. That was the only color guard we had. We were, we were so, um, so intentional about worship growing up that in Pentecost, they would tell you, you can't open up service. We didn't have praise teams. Where everybody had to have their own personal mic. We didn't do that. But they said, you can't open up devotional service or sing in the choir unless you got the Holy Ghost. And sometimes they would give you grace and says, if you don't have it, you got to be actively seeking. That means every time they open up the altar, you got to come forth. But now we're living in an hour where people have learned a holy dance, but they don't have the Holy Ghost. And not only do they not have the Holy Ghost, they don't desire it. And what has happened now, we have become, and y'all hear what I'm saying, I don't come to fight anybody, I just want to bring context to what I'm saying. We have become so non-denominational in our fellowship that we've gotten some great benefits from it. The only challenge is that in our ecumenical fellowship, there are people who have learned the culture of Pentecost. They shout like us. They dance like us. They hoop like us. But the closer you get to them, they're lacking some sort of conviction and standard. Them and their pastors will go to the club and still hoop and they don't even hide it. You know why they don't hide it? Because some of them got the experience of Pentecost without the foundation of holiness. And God has always been intentional about how he wants to be worshipped. I'm so thankful for this liberty that we have. I mean, we have great liberty. If you say the church is too strict now, you have no idea. You have no idea. you have there were no lap scarves in the 40s and 50s and 60s I'm not fighting y'all it's not a fight y'all why there were no lap scarves needed <laughs> what the women didn't wear earrings talking about the men wearing earrings You better be thankful for the liberty that we have and the freedom we have. But you also must be careful that our liberty don't put us in captivity. You got to be very careful that you don't start comparing God's instructions to your life to other people's freedom. Because what other people can do don't mean you can do. There's a sound in Pentecost. And that sound doesn't come from the Hammond organ. There's a sound in Pentecost. And it doesn't come from the beating of the tamarind. It comes from our consecration. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I haven't done everything right. Tell him I still don't do everything right, but I still got conviction. I still, I need y'all to praise him for conviction. I still got conviction. The Lord still corrects me. I still apologize. I still ask him for forgiveness before I go to the pulpit, before I go to the court. I still repent. When I was growing up, if you got to church early, you go to the altar and pray. If you got there late, you got down at your seat and prayed. You don't come straight out of your car with Beyonce in your ear and jump run straight to the microphone and try to lead me somewhere. We're living in an hour where cussing preachers have become the normal. Oh, y'all preachers didn't say none of me. Y'all cussing? Y'all ain't saying it. Come on.
I need you to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, everything speaks. How are you going to serve in the church? And your Facebook post is anti-church. How in the world are you going to leave choir rehearsal and then make a subliminal message about your minister music? There's no meeting necessary. Text them and tell them you are dismissed. And you definitely not going to get a check from us and then everything speaks and not just what you post but also what you like tell her tell the people in your city tell them everything speaks everything we are casual Wade and I'm thankful for it I'm thankful that we can put on our jeans and our t-shirts and come to church because it's really not about that it's really not about that but we're seeing something that's happening what casual church is beginning to produce casualties oh y'all y'all just shut down on me now uh oh uh oh the scoop of blazeleros I'll be coming back to Brazil soon because these people are about to fight me in here hear what I'm saying to you it really has produced casualties until now we prepare to come to church with the garments on that accentuates us and not God how much snatching do you need and I'm not just talking to the women I'm talking about some men come on how much how much we gotta turn away so we're not distracted now you done got a tattoo on your chest and now you're making sure that your outfit is cut low enough so we can read it do you walk in your freedom but what about your assignment oh what about your assignment well this is my body really the bible said you've been bought with the price and i beseech you therefore brother if y'all help me preach i'll move on by the mercies of god that you present your body that's a living sacrifice somebody shout don't lose the sound about how he wanted us to approach him Whew. okay so I remember the other week I was going to the Stellas and I didn't find out I didn't find out until 48 hours before the Stellas that they wanted me to perform that's what they said perform and I had already been planning for the Stellas. I had stylists reaching out to me and says, we would love to style you. And uh, you, don't, you, didn't, you don't even have to pay for the clothes. We will give you the clothes. All we ask you to do is give us credit on social media. We love your ministry. <laughs> we would like to style you. And I said, I'm good, I'm good. One night after ramp DMV service, brother Sean Fendel, walked up to me to God be the glory for you and says Bishop uh, who's styling you because I can call the guy you know the guy I said I'm good Sean he says Bishop what are you wearing I says I already got what I'm wearing Sean Sean says please don't tell me you're wearing that robe I said I am wearing my robe <laughs> so then when I got to Vegas my chief of staff, Brother Enoch, says, so Bishop, I see that you, do you need to go to the mall and pick up anything? I said, no, I'm good. You know how people have a, a way, your, 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 your leaders, they love you, and so they're trying to save you, you know. 
Then Brother Darnell from Chicago, from Chicago, Nashville, I know you're watching, from Monarch Entertainment, I went behind stage, he says, are you still changing into the rope? Yes, I am. And I finally looked at them, I says, it's mighty funny that y'all keep telling, asking me, am I gonna change? As I've been walking around here, people have, get, have their breast out. Their stomachs out. But then, you want me to become something else. All I'm trying to do is get y'all to see in here, there's a sound that God put in your belly. And you're so busy trying to be a cheap counterfeit of what you think people want instead of being who God needs. The Bible says God was so intentional about how he wanted to be worshipped. Scripture says, listen, I love going to Israel. I just got back from Israel. I'm taking another group in May. I'm going all the time. I go in December in my time of sabbatical just to pray and study with rabbis. But out of all of the places in Israel and around Jerusalem that really speak to me, yes, the garden tomb is amazing. The western wall, you can feel the presence of, of the Lord reverberating off of that wall. Really, you can. And you see the shuckling of the, of, of the Jewish men going back and forth praying and the bar mitzvahs in the street. You can feel all of that. Sea of Galilee is amazing. But I'm going to tell you what speaks to me the greatest. It's the southern temple steps. Hear me. The temple is no longer there. I hope I'm not long. I might be a little long winded. All right. All right. The temple is destroyed. You know, they have the temple mount where the mosque is there for the, for the Muslims. But the steps are still there. And somebody said to me, he said, what's so significant about the southern temple steps? These would have been the entry steps to the holy temple. These are the same steps that Yeshua, Jesus, and his disciples would have walked up. So every time I go to Jerusalem, I just start stepping on the steps. And I'm like, I wonder, did he step here? I wonder, did he put his foot right here? Because it's the same steps. It's, it's the same steps. This is why you have in the Bible what you call Psalms of Ascension. I was glad when they said unto me, these are songs of ascension. These are songs they sung while they were climbing. While they were coming to Jerusalem and finally getting there, they would walk for so many steps and start singing the songs of ascension. Now, as you see these wonderful made steps here in Carter Memorial, when I walk down these steps, I walk down and up these steps without looking. But you can't do that at the Southern Temple steps. Because the Southern Temple steps are uneven. So, intentionally the rabbi says they made the steps uneven. So no one could casually ascend. Every step had to be a careful step. Every step had to be an intentional step. Because God was intentional about how he wanted to be worshipped. And even down to what they wore when the priests would go into the holy place serving the people, being a proxy, being a liaison between, between God and his people. He would tell him, here, come here, come here, come here. Let me put this breastplate on you. This breastplate had 12 precious stones because there was one stone that represented Asher. Another one that represented Benjamin. Another represented Dan. Ephraim and Manasseh, Judah, Zebulon, Nephtali, or Issachar. And he could have made them rocks, but he made them gems. Because he was communicating to the preachers that my people are precious to me. And I'm tired of a generation of social media preachers 
that are trying to be shepherds and pastors and don't have the fragrance of sheep you want to be a pastor and you ain't never been a greeter you don't hear what i'm saying you're trying to be a lord over people you ain't never served with he said my people are precious and that's why i don't let any and everybody come and preach to my people because these oh, oh y'all i don't care how fancy they are i don't care how popular they are and i don't care how much money they raise i am responsible for who lays hands oh that's why you come, come on carter you better thank god you got a pastor that everything don't run through here he said let me put this hat on you this mitre and it's an inscription on the mitre that says holiness unto the Lord so you see even to this day orthodox Jews still wear kippers upon their head some Sabbath keeping believers they wear kippers upon their head because it said that a man will never rob a store with a kippa on his head because the kippa is forever keeping him reminded that he's under the auspice of an open heaven and the watchful eye of God and then in this scripture today <laughs> he said make a space priest on the bottom in the skirt of your ephod pomegranates and bales pomegranates and bales pomegranates and bales pomegranates and bales it tells me about worship in the Old Testament. It's bloody and noisy. <laughs> oh, God! It's bloody and noisy. Pomegranates and bales. Pomegranates and bales. Pomegranates and bales. Why pomegranate? Because a pomegranate is a symbol of the 613 laws, ordinances, and commands. So when the high priest goes into the holy place or the most holy place, hallelujah, he's declaring that I'm taking the law of God and the things of the laws are being satisfied in this act. Pomegranates and bales, pomegranates and bales, pomegranates and, and bales, pomegranates and bales. And he's moving. I'm taking this sacrifice for all of y'all sin. And as I'm moving, you can hear the sound of pomegranates and bales. Pomegranates and bales. Pomegranates. Hey, I'm going after your forgiveness. And you can hear the sound of pomegranates and bales. I'm going to get your deliverance. And you can hear the sound of pomegranates. I'm going to get you another victory. And you can hear the movement of God in the most holy place. And it's long you heard the sound of pomegranates and bales you knew the sacrifice was accepted but now we're not listening for the sound when I said don't lose the sound that means don't get to the place that we've done church and we're so accustomed to doing church we forgot that there's no sound sound I don't care how many people applaud you it's God approving there's a, there's a story about this professional musician that was on the stage and he was performing and after he finished performing everybody began to jump and say encore encore he went off the stage and he was behind the stage and the stage manager just said you did good he says no I didn't he said no you did good don't you hear the noise of the crowd he said no I didn't do good he said why you said it he said because there's a man sitting on the front row with his arms folded he said man how are you going to let one man sitting determined that you didn't do good he says because that one man is my instructor and some of us are getting intoxicated with the applause of the wrong crowd my god it's not important to me that I be everybody's popular preacher it's important to me that after all the years of doing this I still have the sound. Woo. 
I still, I have, I still have the same. And so the Bible, the Bible declares that when the priest moved, there was a sound with this movement. Um, in 2010, an earthquake 7.0 hit Port-au-Prince, Haiti. 7.0 just almost landed the place. First day they are pulling people out of the wreckage. Second day they're pulling people out of the wreckage. Seven days they begin to say, anybody left, they will be dead by now. But people say, keep looking. They kept looking. Eighth day, ninth day. They got to the tenth day and got ready to bulldoze a building. And all of a sudden, when the man climbed up in the front seat of the bulldozer, somebody said, hold up! I hear sound. He said, what? No, he said, I hear something. I hear something. And they heard somebody singing. It was an 84 year old woman under the wreckage mm. and a sound saved her life. I need somebody to open up your mouth right now because there's victory coming to you because of your sound. Oh, come on! Don't lose your sound. Come on, Zion! There's a sanctified sound in your belly. I need to hear it out of this session. Come on, Zion. Come on, I need you to get on your feet and start praying. Lord, I'm asking you to send another wind, God. You brought this church to another place, but send another wind, God. Send a wind of revival, God. Send a wind of Pentecost, God. Come on. Ho, 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 God. Release the sound of the shofar, God. I want you to lay your hands on your neighbor's shoulder and tell him there's more in you. There's more. God want to sound out of you. I said, God want to sound out of you. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh. Don't lose it. 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 Hey, don't lose it. Don't lose it. Jesus said, believe on me. As the scripture has said, and out of your belly, that's it. Oh, come on. Out of your belly, I'm ready to move now. Out of your belly, hey, Shiplo River. Somebody shout, River. Rivers of living water. Come on, let the river flow. Come on, let the river flow. Come on, let the river flow. Oh, my, 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 my. Everyone stand and I want you to do this real quickly. I know I told you, everyone stand if you will. If everyone stand if you will. I want you to do this really quickly. Uh, every new year in Israel is announced with a sound. Curtis, it's the blowing of the shofar. I want you to put your arms around somebody as quickly as you can. Hallelujah. You're touching somebody that just survived one of the worst seasons of their life. Some of you are touching somebody who have not caught their breath from their last battle. But while you're touching them, I need you to tell them your season is about to change. Keep hold on to them, hold on to them. your season. When the priest 
went into the holy place with the bells he was going not after his personal victory he was going for a corporate victory the reason why you're holding on to the person you're holding on to tonight hallelujah I need you to look at him and tell him I'm coming out with your victory tonight I'm getting ready to go in I'm about to go in but when I come out I'm coming out with your a Scottish author that says this he says be nice to everybody because everybody is fighting some battles you don't know about I'm declaring tonight nobody will leave this service and be able to go home and commit suicide it happens but not on my watch it happens but not on my watch and sometimes we don't fight for people unless we get all the details but I'm from a different school if I walk up on a fight and I see somebody I love is in the fight I don't ask who started it I don't ask whose fault is it I fight now and ask questions later Tell the person you touch and tell them I don't need all the details. God is about to give you. Everybody on your row is about to get victory tonight. I feel it. Come on, sit it, sit it, sit it down. You're tell them everything on this row gonna get victory tonight. Get ready. Listen. for the secret battles and this is what I hear I'm serious this is what I hear in the Lord the, what, the reason why this is so important this is what I hear in the Lord because some of you are not just physically tired you're mentally exhausted to the point if you got a whole night of sleep it wouldn't change it because the battle you've been dealing with is in your mind T talk to the person you're touching tell them God is going to give you victory in every place of your life anxiety will not have a place imagine how God has used you in the midst of your fears consider how much more he's going to use you once you get victory over it tonight oh I feel the Lord Oh my no, no, no. Y'all hold on to your neighbor. Hold on to him because listen, this thing is gonna be corporate tonight. Now listen, don't now you can deceive me tonight by opening up your mouth and releasing no sound. You can deceive me. Because we're so accustomed to it. The praise team sings the songs and we just move our lips. But tonight, your victory and the victory of the person you're touching is connected to a sound. This next victory is a voice activated victory. I've been away from home for two weeks and I walked in my apartment and I said something and my speaker started communicating with me. Although it had been laying dormant for two weeks, all it was waiting for to come on was my voice. Some of you, there's a miracle that's been waiting on your...
somebody watching at home, I dare you to get on your neighbor's nerves and just start. Oh! Somebody's anointing is being renewed. Somebody's gift is being reactivated. Come on, prophets. Come on, prophets. Come on, intercessors. Come on, intercessors. I'm, I'm going to give you a prophetic assignment and I, be, I need you to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost because we put all the emphasis that the power is in the pulpit but there's some power in the pew you don't, you don't need no words for this all you need is a sound for this I'm telling you somebody near you who shall somebody near you is in an in-between space they in a suspended place and we always talk about people who ready to backslide but even strong people need strength I'm going to give you an assignment when I count to three I need you to move quickly as you can I want you to go over to somebody you want to see God bless and I want you to lay your hands on their shoulder and just release a sound one two three do it now do it do it The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I pray today's message has been a blessing to you and that you've been expanded and increased and you've been given the desire to walk even closer to God. If you've really been blessed by today's message, I want you to consider partnering with me that I can continue to get out quality content, inspirational, motivational and gospel messages because we know it's through the foolishness of preaching that souls are saved. When you partner with us, you're helping us spread the word of God, not just domestically, but internationally all over the world. And so remember today as you sow, that even though the money or the gift may leave your hand, it will never leave your life because you're partnering with something that's greater than you. We want to hear from you. If you've been blessed by our ministry, we'd like to get your messages. Send us an email. Uh, follow us on social media. And take this opportunity to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Remember, I know what it feels like to cry till you have no more tears left to cry. But after you finish crying, don't stop. Get up and keep crying.